Nationally, 60% of PhD students have paid assistantships. An FIU professor thinks at FIU, the rate is lower than this. In a random sample of 50 PhD students, 26 have assistantships. Use a 5% significance level to test the FIU professor's claim. All right, so they're telling us that we want to test the professor's claim, right? Test the claim. Anytime it says that, we know we're dealing with a hypothesis test. All right, so at that point, let's try to identify the claim. So the claim is that an FIU professor thinks that FIU the rate is lower than this national um, percentage of 60%. So it's about the rate. The claim is about a rate. That means we're dealing with the proportion, right? So his claim is that the proportion is lower than 60%. So it's lower than the national rate. Okay, so the proportion is less than 0 0.60 is the professor's claim. Okay, so once we have that, let's identify HOHA. So that's our step two. Get the competing pair of hypotheses HO and HA. Okay, so the claim here has a less than symbol that makes it HA. So I'm going to say rho is less than 0 0.60. And HO is obviously the complement of that or the opposite of that. So we're going to say greater than or equal to 0 0.60. From there, we're going to record the data in the problem. So our data step involves collecting usually the following information, n, p hat, and a significance level alpha. Okay, so let's go through the problem and identify these values here. It says that um, a sample of, in a random sample of 50 PhD students, so our n is 50, it says 26 have assistantships. Now recall that p hat is x over n by definition, where x is the number of subjects having the trait we're looking for. In this case, we're talking about the percent that have paid assistantships. If 26 have assistantships, that's our x, 26, out of the total surveyed of 50. So that is our p hat. And of course, alpha is 5%. Okay, so from here, let's uh, calculate our p hat. So we'll have 26 divided by 50. It's going to give us 52% there as our p hat. And then from there, we can move on and use that in our test that formula in step four. Okay, so 0 0.52 here in step four, we're going to go ahead and get our test stat formula. For hypothesis testing about the proportion, the test stat formula is z is equal to p hat minus rho naught, rho naught comes from h naught, right? And then divided by the square root of rho naught times q naught, or the complement of rho naught, and then finally n. Okay, so let's fill in this information that we have. The p hat is 0.52 minus rho naught, which is essentially the number from ho, which is 0.60 and divide that by the square root of the same number we had here, 0 0.60, times its complement. So if you take from 100%, 60%, you get 40%. So the complement is 0 0.40. And then divide by n, n is 50 in this problem. Okay, so based on this, we'll do our calculation. On top, we're gonna get 0 0.08 or negative 0 0.08, right? So it'll be 0.52 minus 0 0.60. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of 0.6 times 0.4 divided by 5 ohm. And when we're finished, we get negative 1.15. Negative 1.15. Okay, so that's our test stat, negative 1.15. From here, um, we're going to go get the critical value. This problem asked us to test the professor's claim. It didn't specify any particular technique, so we're going to use the traditional method of hypothesis testing. So let's go ahead and get the critical value for this test. In order to get the critical value, let's draw the bell curve, right? And on that bell curve, Let's go ahead and label the tail or the rejection region, right, for the problem. 
In this case, we're looking at HA to determine that. It has a less than symbol. Recall that less than symbols in HA imply that it's a left tail test. So we're going to highlight the left tail here and say that that's our rejection region. If our test stat should land over here on the number line, we will reject HO. Our goal is to figure out where that region begins. Remember that it will be negative because it's on the left of zero. Inside here, of course, we will not reject HO. So in here, we will not re reject HO. All right, so let's determine this critical value, the cutoff area where the do not reject region begins or end, sorry, and the reject region begins. So let's try to figure out where the rejection region starts by identifying that critical Z value. In order to do that, we're gonna to go to the, the T table, actually, even though we're looking for a Z value, remember at the bottom of the T table, we have some critical Z values. And we're gonna look up this alpha. Because we only have a one tail test, we're going to look up alpha under the infinity row of our T table. Okay, so let's go do that and see what number we come up with. We're going to look up 5% under the infinity row of our t-table to see what our critical z value is. So we're looking up alpha equals 0.05 on the t-table. Scrolling all the way down to we see the last row or infinity. We get the answer 1.645. Okay, so we get the value negative 1.645, right? Negative 1.645, so that's our critical value, negative 1.645. Now let's compare that critical value to our test stat and see whether we reject HO or not. Well, our test stat over here is something that's in the do not reject region, right? Because while it's to the left of zero, it's not far enough to the left to land in the reject HO position. So at that point, our initial conclusion our initial conclusion is going to be that we do not reject, and therefore that we do not support HA. So do not reject HO, do not support HA. So now the question is, which one was our claim, right? Which one was our claim? Was it HA or HO? When I look back at the claim, I see that it's HA. So we should use the wording that's associated with HA down here. So our final step, the wording of the final conclusion is going to say that the sample data does not support the claim. The sample data does not support the claim. Does not support the claim that what? The rate is less than 60%. So essentially what's happened here is that even though there is a lower percentage of assistant ships from the sample data than we expected because we expected that it would be 60%, that's the national average, right, or the national percentage. Um, even though our rated FIU is lower than that, essentially it's not lower, low enough that we can reject the um, possibility that it is still equal to 60%. Remember, a random sample will have uh, fluctuation due to random sampling error. So the fact is, is that this data is not extreme enough for us to assume that the professor's claim is correct. So essentially we're saying that, well, it may be less than 60, but this data is strong enough to support that.